As you know, the UCAT is always changing, techniques are evolving, we're getting better at understanding how to perform well in the exam. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the best bits from FutureDoc that are still relevant today and have stood the test of time, plus a compilation of some of the new things that you need to understand to get the right mix of skills and techniques available to you to perform highly in the UCAT. So I'll see you at the end where I'll show you a little bit more about some new resources that we've made that you can access. But otherwise, I hope you enjoy and make sure that you Take note of all these key skills to help you perform highly in your UCAT. Number one is to go through the General Medical Practice Handbook for medical students. Most of the themes in the Situational Judgment Test are picked up from this guide and the best way to get an idea of the mindset that you need to have will be by reading the book. It shouldn't take too long and it's not absolutely necessary to memorise everything that you read. It's just to give you a general gist, an idea of what to expect and what you should be looking out for. This guide is kind of like a blueprint to the SJT as many of the themes are also found in the GMC as well. So I highly recommend that you take some time to get familiar with it. Tip number two is don't think about what you would do. The questions usually give a scenario where you are a medical student or a dental student or a doctor. Make sure that you read the question carefully and that you take into consideration the role of the person you are presented with. For example, as a medical student, you might not be able to do some of the things that a doctor would do, like giving a diagnosis or prescribing some medication. So make sure that you keep this in mind to avoid being caught out. Sometimes the course of action that you yourself would take might not be listed out or might not be presented in the scenario. However, don't let this distract you from the question. You have to focus on what is given to you in the scenario and in the questions and choose the option that seems most ethical to you. And tip number three is to rate the response, not the scenario. Sometimes the situational judgment test scenarios can be negative or positive, but the response might have the opposite effect. So you have to ensure that you don't fall into the trap of rating your answer based on the scenario rather than the response. For example, the scenario might say that a medical student has messed up a patient's notes, causing confusion to the patient and the medical staff. However, the response may say that the medical student acknowledged their mistake and has apologised for the confusion. Even though the scenario itself was negative, the medical student's response demonstrated honesty and integrity and therefore was positive. So to summarise, the questions in the situational judgment section can be tricky and it can be hard to know what the correct answer is. But the trick is not to think about how you personally would answer the question, but rather what would the GMC say that the correct option is? A lot of people focus a lot more on the other sections of the UK exam as they don't believe that the situational judgment test is very important. However, this does form part of your application to medical or dental school and it will be assessed. So by spending time and effort on this section of the UK exam, you should be able to achieve a band one. Firstly, there is no negative marking throughout the UK exam, which means that if you get the question wrong, they won't take away a point. Regardless of whether you know the answer or not, it will still give you a chance of getting the question right. So remember to never leave a question blank. Secondly, allow at least a minute at the end of the section in order for you to go back and review anything that you might have flagged. This will also give you some time to at least make some quick guesses if you haven't had the chance to make it through all of the questions in that section. And finally, be ruthless with your time management. If you are really struggling with the passage and you're just not understanding and you're not coming up with the answer, then it's probably a good idea to make a guess, flag the question and move on. Remember, you might have some time at the end where you can come back and review that answer. It might seem like an easy section and all you have to do is read some text and answer the questions, but do not underestimate it. Time will catch you out if you don't prepare. 
Number one is to work smart. This means taking a second, take a step back to really figure out what the question is asking you and find out if you need to do any calculations or not. It can be very tempting to just start making a bunch of calculations as soon as you read the question, but just taking a moment to step back and take an overview of what you're being asked will help you to identify what you need to calculate. Sometimes you won't need to calculate anything at all to get to the correct answer. Tip number two is to make use of your whiteboard. For this section of the UCAT, you will be able to use an online calculator as well as a whiteboard. These can be helpful for questions that require you to make some calculations or draw things out to visually represent data, as this will help you to answer the question. Make the most out of these when you need them, but be careful not to overuse them, as sometimes you could end up wasting more time than you need to. Tip number three is to revise probability, arithmetic, and Venn diagrams. One of the best ways to prepare for the decision making is to brush up on these skills and to prepare for mental maths and arithmetic questions. Having knowledge of these things will help you to understand the questions better and will allow you to arrive at the answer a lot quicker. As you now know, the decision making section has many different types of questions that you could be asked. It may be worth keeping track of the types of questions that you struggle with, as this can help you to structure your revision plan around your weakest areas. Number one is to be economical with your calculations. Try to figure out whether you actually need to do a calculation or whether you can solve something with logic alone. You may be presented with a question that looks really complex and you might think that there are loads of calculations to do, but actually on closer inspection, you'll realize that you could actually figure it out without having to do any calculations at all. If you can avoid doing many calculations and use logic alone to eliminate one, two, or even three of the answers provided, this can make it much easier or give you a much higher chance of choosing a correct answer, especially if you are guessing and you are running out of time. Tip number two is to use the calculator sparingly. You want to avoid using the calculator as much as possible, but when you do use the calculator, make sure that you are using it efficiently. Make sure that you use the keyboard shortcut Alt plus C to make the calculator appear on the screen and practice using the keypad instead of the mouse to do all of your calculations as this can save you a lot of time. Tip number three is to be ruthless with your time. The quantitative reasoning section purposely has questions that are designed to be impossible questions that are there to slow you down and waste your time. Remember, if you answer with 100% accuracy, but only get through 70% of the test, then you won't score as highly as if you got through the entire test with 80% accuracy. So make sure that you are on the lookout for these impossible questions and don't be shy to make a guess, flag, skip the question and move on. There is no negative marking, which means that you won't lose a mark if you get the question wrong. And you may also have some time at the end to come back and review that question. So that was an overview of the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT exam. Most students agree that the most challenging part of this section is the limited time that you have to answer each question. It is really easy to panic if you can't get the answer straight away or if you feel like you're running out of time. This can throw you off your game for the rest of the section or even for the rest of the UCAT exam. But as long as you remain calm and remember what we've spoken about in this video, then you should be fine. Number one is remember that you don't always have to start with the top left box. You can use the bare bones box or the box which has the least going on inside of it. Remember that the pattern has to apply to all six of the boxes in that set. Also, if you can't figure out what's going on in one box, then try another box or try and take an overview approach where you're looking at all of the boxes as a whole to try and figure out what the pattern could be and what's common and similar to all of them. My second tip is don't go too crazy with it because again, you are under timed conditions and you might not have the time to figure out exactly what the pattern is, especially if it's a conditional pattern. If you are finding a question really difficult, then it's totally okay to make a guess, flag it and come back to it later. 
Remember that there's no negative marking throughout the UCAT exam, so even if you don't know the answer, they won't take away a mark if you make a guess. And it's better to try to guess than to leave it blank. Finally, my third tip would be to trust your gut. Sometimes you just have like an instinctive feeling or maybe you can't quite figure out what's going on but your gut is telling you to go with one. If you aren't able to figure out exactly what the pattern is, then trust your gut. Well, I hope you found that useful. As we always say, a fundamental resource for the UCAT is really important. So you can check out our brand new UCAT course ready for this year that's gonna give you all the latest stuff. Or if you, again, would like our help one-on-one -on -one to help get you through not only this, but the entire medical and dental school application check out our program here where we've had ridiculous success with getting not just first time students in but people who failed in the past and didn't get in several times and have come to us and we've been the difference between not getting in and getting in so check out exactly how we can help you on that video but otherwise thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next video